Diesel locomotives, they power the world. Without them, all of this wouldn't be possible. But what makes a diesel locomotive tick? How do they work? And what are the different types of diesel locomotives? In this series, we're going to cover all three types of diesel locomotives and how they work. Let's start with the most familiar locomotive, the diesel electric type. These types of engines come in a wide variety of shapes and sizes and can be found all over the world. Their operation is pretty straightforward. Under the hood you have the heart of the locomotive, the diesel engine, also known as the prime mover. Depending on the model, these engines can range in size anywhere from the massive V10s found in SD45s to the relatively small inline 6 found in GE25 tonners. In diesel electric locomotives, the engine does not directly spin the wheels. Instead, there's a massive generator that attaches to the front of the engine. While most locomotives only have one generator and one engine, there are some models such as gensets that can have up to three of each, but they're scaled down. The generator is a mechanism that creates all the electricity used by the locomotive, and different models will require different generators depending on what types of electricity they use. Some models, like the SD70 Ace, use alternating current as their main power source, and others, like the ES44 DC, use direct current. So, you've got an engine spinning a generator, creating electricity. But where does all that power go? Well, it pretty much goes all over the locomotive. It's used to charge batteries, power communication systems, run fan motors, and a whole list of other things. But the things that use the most power are the traction motors. These, along with a simple gearbox, are what make the wheels turn. What's really neat is that you can change the gear ratios in the gearbox to get different wheel speeds, while still running the motors at the same RPM. The traction motors on a locomotive are massive. They weigh thousands of pounds each and are close to three feet tall. They have to be that big in order to deliver the several thousand horsepower trains need when they're pulling heavy loads. Typically, there's one traction motor per axle, but there are many locomotive models with dummy axles or drivetrains that eliminate the need for a motor on each axle. This is known as an A11A or an A1A-A1A wheel arrangement, depending on if the locomotive has four or six axles. A modern example of a locomotive with six axles and four traction motors would be the ES44C4. So, there's the basic operation of a diesel locomotive. The engine spins a giant generator that powers equally giant traction motors. When the engineer increases the throttle, the engine and generator rev up, delivering more power to the motors. But, there's one more very important feature on the diesel locomotive that's only possible because of the traction motors, and that is dynamic braking. You see, diesel electric locomotives actually have two ways of slowing down much like a semi-truck does with its jake brake and air brakes. However, a locomotive doesn't use its engine to slow down, it uses its traction motors. Now, not all locomotives have dynamic brakes, but most of them do. And dynamic braking can't be used as a substitute for traditional air brakes, because the train has to be in motion for it to work. To understand how dynamic braking works, we have to understand that motors can also act as generators. When electricity is applied to a motor, it exerts a turning force on the rotor. But when a turning force is applied to the rotor, it creates electricity. Now, let's say you have a train traveling at a speed of 30 miles an hour, going downhill. The engineer must maintain a speed of 30 miles an hour, but he needs very fine control over his speed reduction as the train accelerates downhill. But he doesn't want to burn up the train's brake shoes so he puts the locomotives into dynamic brake mode. This cuts power to the traction motors, but since the rotors are still spinning due to the kinetic energy of the train, the motors turn into generators, because the spinning electromagnets in the rotor induce current in the field windings. That's the reason why dynamic brakes don't work when the train stopped. The rotor is stationary, so it can't generate current. This newly generated electricity is routed to the top of the locomotive, 
where it runs through a set of resistors, which begin to heat up. The heat is then dissipated into the air by the dynamic brake fan. Another factor in the effectiveness of dynamic braking is the flow of electricity. The power being generated by the motors is flowing through them the wrong way, which creates a braking force. The motors want to turn the way the electricity is pushing them, but the weight and kinetic energy of the train won't allow it. Some locomotives even have fans next to the traction motors as well as dynamic brake fans, because all that resistance in the motor can generate quite a bit of heat. And there you have it. That's how a diesel electric locomotive and its dynamic brakes work. The next video in this series will cover diesel mechanical locomotives. Thanks for watching. If y'all enjoyed this video, consider checking out some other ones of mine. Also, maybe pass yourself by the merch shop, because there's a new t-shirt design coming out soon. Anyways, till next time.